Hey, what's up? It's your boy Mike B. Coming to talk to you guys about last night's episode of Catfish, which I believe was supposed to be part one of the season finale, uh, which I didn't believe that it was a real uh, a, a new episode, but my DVR was recording it, and I saw the names. I'm like, I feel like I've talked about these people before. Uh, and then when I saw Neve in that boot, I mean, that uh, the leg cast, I'm like, this must be an old episode because I remember seeing him record vid uh, videos with that cast either last season or earlier this season. So I was convinced that this episode was a repeat. Uh, but then I looked through my uploads on YouTube and I couldn't see that I talked about it. So then I was confused. So we're going to pretend this is a new episode and talk about it. And we're talking with Blake, 27 years old from California, who moved to Texas. Now, Blake met this girl named Kirsten on Twitter. And y'all know it don't take much. It's something about the social media dating that just makes people fall in love. And so, uh, and she was so, she was a model. She was beautiful. Had pictures with famous folk. Told uh, Blake that she uh, was dating or used to date Michael Phelps. And that, Dust, I believe Dustin Hoffman was her godfather or something like that. And she had pictures to back all this stuff up. So it looked legit. So it's like, cool, I, I got to caught me somebody. She went to, I believe she either went to California for something or moved to California. But she was staying in a hotel in Beverly Hills. And he's like, well, that's what, you know, I'm from uh, California, so I'll come up and see you. He goes to the hotel where she is, and he's outside, like, calling her up. Hey, you sweet, sexy thing, I'm outside. <laughs> come and holler at your boy. <laughs> she didn't come down. And then I think she was saying, like, I'll be down in 15 minutes and probably 15 minutes turn to 30 minutes. And then eventually she started talking about, I got a son that she never mentioned before. Uh, and I don't know if they mentioned how long they had been talking. If they did, I didn't catch that. But she got a son and maybe she didn't feel comfortable meeting him with her son being there because I can understand in normal circumstances, a woman not wanting to introduce her kids to somebody that she don't know until she gets to know them. But when you're lying already, <laughs> I feel like it don't really matter. Uh, but for I, I guess it was for that reason they didn't meet up that day. He said several times after that he tried to meet up with her, but still, I mean, no success. So he's calling on Max and Eve. Or before he called them, he did his own little research and he figured out that the pictures that she was pretending were hers actually belonged to this girl named Sarah, Sarah Grace. Now I don't know if he knew exactly the girl's name or if maybe. Uh, Kirsten told him that, but anyway, when he confronted her about it, she let him know that her, you know, she lied. I'm sorry. My real name is Kendra. So he was he was cool with that, and then uh, he calls Max and Eve because now he's a little concerned. You know, they usually get concerned after the fact and after a couple dollars and after you know wasting your time for for years. Uh, they usually now they want some help. So Max and Eve come down, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, and they realize that they, they see the pictures that she's sending now of Kendra, and they look a little bit candid. Don't you? It just she seems too pretty to be a too good to be true. Let me say that not too pretty to be uh, for real, because there are beautiful women out there. But it just seemed like she went from one beautiful blonde girl to now a beautiful brunette. But she didn't want to meet up with him. Like, why not? Maybe she didn't like him. Maybe he looks goofy to her, and she don't trust him. Uh, but anyway, Max and Eve do their little research, and when they found out that the initial girl that Kendra was pretending to be was, well, her name was Kirsten, but she was using Sarah Grace's picture, they reached out to Sarah Grace. Found out, I mean, they talked to her, and she was like, uh, when they said, you know, a girl named Kirsten, she was like, oh, oh, my God. And they're like, oh, so you <laughs> you had dealings with Kirsten. And they was like, she uh, she was contacted by this girl named Kendra, and who said she had a niece named Kirsten, and her niece was a huge fan. Her niece loved all her pictures, and she wanted her to do her a favor and send her a current picture of herself holding a piece of paper with the name Kirsten on it so that she can give it to her niece. Her niece would love it. And we all know that that was just probably... <laughs> some proof that she was going to need to prove who she was. This line is saying that she was Kirsten. But she did it and didn't hear anything really after that. So she started doing her own little research. Sarah Grace did. And she came across this, I guess, scam alert page in which people were talking about this girl named Kendra posting fake pictures and pretending to be people who she who she wasn't. 
And then they saw a message from a girl named Sarah Ordo who said, you know, Kendra's been using my pictures. And then when they clicked on Sarah, they saw the pictures that uh, Kendra had been sending to Blake. I mean, the same girl. So they reached out to her and she started telling them this story about uh, her run-ins with Kirsten and, and Sarah or Kendra and Sarah on Twitter or something like that. Anyway, she just confirmed once again that this Kendra girl is lying. But they don't know what Kendra looks like. They don't know anything about it. So they go and talk to old Blake and this about middle of the show. And they're like, well, I mean, with all this information, like you are we've basically proven that she's lied to you at least twice. Do you still want to go through with this? He's like, you know, the person that I've been talking to is who I have the connection with. So I really want to meet this person and see if um, maybe something can come out of it. You know, it doesn't matter about the, the, the fake profile, the pictures and how she looks or whatever. I'm just, I, I've, I got the connection with that person. So that I want to meet that person. So uh, Neve calls her like he always does. And she sounded, it was weird how, <laughs> it was weird how nice and bubbly and professional she sounded on the phone as if like she has no care in the world and like she does no wrong. Like everything's just roses, daisies, flowers, perfume, you know, just everything's cool. And they're talking, they're talking to her and she's like, he said, I'm, you know, this is Max and Nee from Catfish and we're trying to facilitate a meetup between you and Blake. And she's like, I don't really think we need you know, your help to do that, you know, we can meet any time. And he's like, well, he tried to meet your country ass and you stood him up. You keep lying. But he was trying to be nice. He wanted her to actually agree to meet. <laughs> you know, had it been me, she probably would have hung, <laughs> she would have hung up on me. Because I'm like, oh, he done tried to meet up with your ass. He even came to California, was outside your hotel if you were actually there, but your ass didn't come, you didn't come outside. So don't act like you know you guys can meet at any time when your ass keep lying. But like I said, they didn't say that. They they smoothed it over with her, and she was like, she kind of she she likes him, and she agreed to meet up with them. Let me just say that she agreed to meet up, and they're like, okay, where are we where are we meeting? She's like Idaho. They get to Idaho, and I mean every time they talk to her, she just sounds so nice, and I just it was, I just didn't understand like what. Well, I guess I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't understand why she was so nice. Like, I guess when I think of somebody that's lying and trying to get over it and being devious, I think of them as being. <clears throat> but she was <laughs> just so chipper and everything. Like she didn't like if she was doing something wrong, she didn't know she was doing it. But anyway, they meet her, and I feel like the the meetup was all wrong. Blake, I was so glad that he wasn't the type to just allow her to say what she was going to say and then accept her. Now, remember, I had sympathy for the last episode of, of Catfish. I was on the Catfish, Catfisher's side. I, well, I, not really on her side because she lied, but I felt sorry for her and wanted her to have somebody. But this time, I totally wasn't on Kendra's side. She showed up. She's a, a bigger woman. Uh, I, I didn't know if that was her real hair or not. But she wasn't like an ugly girl. She just was a liar. So he's like, I don't understand like why you couldn't introduce me to Kendra from the beginning. Like, be Kendra. She's And she's saying that her name is Kendra. I don't really know if that's the truth or not. That's all we can go off of. But she's saying that um, like her and a group of her friends started like uh, all these different profiles, fake profiles that they can give to creeps out at the club, you know, in case they didn't want to meet up with them or, or talk to them, they'll let them do, like have this fake profile. And I'm like, if y'all meeting them at the club, they clearly seeing y'all. So, I mean, I <laughs> now this ain't shallow how. If I see you, Kendra, at the at the club, I know you ain't gonna be old Sarah Ordo or Sarah Grace because you look nothing like them. So I guess that didn't make any sense. Max was pretty much pissed off the entire meetup. Because, I mean, the girl kept lying and she was trying, she was getting frustrated with them because they were trying to get to the root of why she's doing it and why, uh, uh, ask questions about the, the fake profiles and they wanted to know with the other girls that were involved and she wasn't trying to talk about none of that. She's like, this is about, you know, me and him and me coming clean and apologizing to him. She did apologize, but she apologized in a way that didn't seem like she felt like she did anything too wrong. She shared, she shared a few tears. 
But I wasn't here for that. And nobody <laughs> Max definitely wasn't. Me was a little bit kosher on this episode. He just let her, you know, speak her piece. And and Blake was like, I just don't understand why you would do anything like this. And I feel like right now you're lying, you're being manipulative, and like what what's the point of it all? And she was like, I'm not here to be, I'm not here to be bashed or whatever. And if you don't want to believe anything that I'm saying, then why am I here? And she gets up and leaves. And I'm like, I'm glad you left because you, you, it, it clearly sounded like she was trying to manipulate the situation and I thought Blake was going to fall for it and he wasn't. Now, the next the next day, they went and talked to Blake like, you know, I feel like we need some type of closure and he wanted to know, once again, like why she felt the need to do something like that to him. And but he wanted it for closure. He didn't he didn't try to make it seem like uh, we can see where we can go from there. He, I felt like he wanted to just know why so he can move on. They meet up, and then Max is steady you know, on this, this kick about he wanted her to admit that she's even lying today. Like she mentioned that Sarah, Sarah Grace, was one of the girls that uh, helped make these fake profiles. And they're like, we talked to Sarah, and we don't believe, I mean, you, we don't even think you know her. And she was like, well, I guess I lied about that yesterday. He's like, well, what makes you believe that? What makes you think we're going to believe you're not lying today? I just felt like she was just a liar and she was good at it. And that's why she's so bubbly and got this nice personality is because, I mean, lying comes natural. And she kept, she did mention that, you know, she had a son. Her son was having some breathing issues and her son was at, uh, at the doctor, and I guess people, somebody would call her if her son was going to be admitted to the hospital, but she's there at this little meetup, and I, I think she thought that she was going to get some brownie points for neglecting her son at the hospital or at the doctor's office to come and be on the show and, and ask for forgiveness from Blake, but Max wasn't having it. He's like, you know what? <laughs> After they like argued for about 10 minutes, he's like, you know what? I don't have to be here. He put his little camera down, walked out. He's like, now you can talk and that bullshit you want to talk all you want to without anyone questioning it. Blake was still a little bit frustrated, but I felt like we didn't really get anywhere with this with this episode except for the fact that on camera, Kendra acted like she's not going to be catfishing anybody anymore. But why wouldn't she? I mean, honestly, I mean, how will we know? I, I think she probably created three more pages that day. I mean, she, she she did shed a few tears and made it seem like she she just wanted Blake to accept her for who she was, even though she lied about who she was. Once she got into the lie, she didn't know how to tell him in a, in a manner that he wouldn't basically walk away. And he's like, you know, you didn't really give me a chance. And with her, I probably wouldn't have given her a chance either. They show the update, and he's like, you know, I, I don't know how she is. I ain't talked to her. He pretty much gave it up, and he's been talking to local girls, which I don't understand why these people don't do that in the first place. If it's, if it's that, I mean, most of the people we see aren't, like, atrocious. They just, they have issues. So instead of dealing with your issues, and then, you know, until you're in a, a place where you want to date people, they just go in and mask their issues. And then date people online because it's a lot easier because you can lie and be whoever you want to be and not be able to see them. Like, this is not really me. <laughs> Mike B don't have all this, this curly fur. But, you know, uh, tomorrow you guys will probably see the real Mike B. But I can be anybody that I want to be behind this camera. I mean, you can do, y'all know about filters and effects. I can be anybody. This Matter of fact, I'm actually white. <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> it, no, y'all know, y'all know me. It's Mike B. But anyway, that was pretty much all this episode was was about. Not not too much going on, uh, and I, I had no sympathy for the catfisher this time. So I'm I'm back on the right side, y'all. <laughs> they didn't fool me this time. Anyway, that's all I got. I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, take care of yourselves. Peace.